Hello, welcome back. This is Chop Pam again. And today we're going to look at some basic textures, adding those to our scene. And so what we can do is what you need first is a directory on your computer that has all the textures in it. Thankfully, the SDK in the XCC folder has a program called XCC Mixer, and we can use this to extract all the textures. And the textures are kept in a file called always.dat in your data directory. So we're just going to navigate there. We're just going to double click into always.dat. Always2.dat has some as well. You're welcome to extract those as well into the same directory. We'll just double click into this guy. You can see that the textures are readable by the program. This middle pane by default might be closed. Um, you can just click drag it out so that it shows. And I guess it's important to note, uh, you can select all on the left side here. And if you right click and copy, it will copy all those files to whatever directory is referenced here. Um, so I'd recommend making a folder on your computer similar to what I have done here. Um, I've created something in documents called AVB textures for 3ds Max paths. It doesn't have to be that long, whatever you want to call it. And it has all the DDS textures in it. In fact, uh, it should be important to note, you probably just want to copy the DDS files here. I mean, it won't be super bad if you like copy non-DDS files, but there's everything in here. You've got INI files, WAV files, W3D files. Um, it's, it's mostly, well, actually, no, it's not even mostly textures. So yeah, you'll want to shift select. Then right click, and if you just hit copy, it'll copy all the files you've selected to this middle pane. That done, um, we will actually set our path in 3ds Max. So we'll go to Configure User Paths under Customize, External Files tab. And you can see I have one here for TSR textures, one for APB textures. Um, if you wanted to add one, I mean, you can reference any number of directories here, basically, and it will read from all those for textures. You can hit Add. You can navigate to your directory. Yeah, my push to talk button messes up dialogues in this, so, you know, it's perfect for recording, right? You can even um, use an option here to add subpaths. But basically, here's the directory it references, and then your 3ds Max will, by default, load any textures when you load a map file, for example, that has those uh, texture references in it. So what we will do is actually create a texture for our ground plane now. Um, you can press M on your keyboard. There's also a toolbar button up here. It's right there, Material Editor. It'll create something that looks like this. It looks very scary, I know. Uh, we call this a slate material editor. It's actually new. It was not in 3ds Max 8. The old 3ds Max 8 editor um, was basically this compact material editor. And it looked a lot like this. Um, I would say just start using by using the slate material editor if you're learning from scratch. And what we can do is double click this W3D. It'll create a material here in the middle. Double click that again. And you'll see your settings over here. We'll call it grassy null. Let's not make it light metal. So here under surface type is where you set the various effects that happen on the surface, say when you run on it, when you drive on it, when you shoot at it. So we're gonna, it's gonna be grass. So we'll call it grass. Um, we'll ignore static sorting, pass count. We'll ignore most of these settings actually. We'll just go straight to textures. Check stage zero texture. Check display. 
And when you hit none, it brings up browse, so you can browse for your texture file. I have a little uh, cheat method here, but again, my push to talk button is messing up the dialogue, so I'm going to do it again. So in um, APB, we actually prefix our tiled textures using T underscore for tiled. And I think um, ours is going to be like T underscore grass something. So call it tgrass.dds. And basically, it's as easy as clicking on our plane, right clicking on the grassy knoll material, and assigning material to selection. And there's our grass. And by the way, in the last video, I neglected to mention the mouse controls for actually moving your camera around. I'll cover that really quickly. You can use your middle mouse button and move your mouse uh, to pan the view if you hold your middle mouse wheel. If you do the same thing while holding Alt, it will rotate your view. And Control alt with the middle mouse button will zoom. And if you want to go to the object you've selected, say you've lost your place, and you just press Z, and it will go to the object that you have selected. OK, that said, we have our texture. We'll select our object, Test Plane, which has our texture on it. You can see it looks really big. Like if we were to walk around on this plane, it would be giant. Like the texture would be really blurry, wouldn't look very good. So let's change some of the scaling for this. Um, let's make it so it tiles a bit. So we're going to select it, go to the Modify tab. And at this point, I'm actually going to um, change it to an editable mesh, which basically makes it so that you can move the uh, vertices and stuff around. Uh, these options will go away permanently, but we can fine tune our um, mesh however we want to. So we're going to right click on plane, set it to editable poly. Now we have options here for doing various things with our plane. Uh, for now we'll ignore that because we want to just edit this texture here. You want to put a modifier on top of it. Modifiers are accessible from this drop down and they're just uh, little adjustment things that you apply on top of this which affect the mesh. And there's one for textures. It's called UVW Map. Uh, you could assign a keyboard shortcut to that. You could assign it as a favorite, which I have. It's up here at the top. Um, you can do various things to access it quickly. Um, for now, we'll just leave this at planar, set it to say 7 7. Basically, I think that means every 7 meters your texture is going to tile again. So the texture itself spans one instance of your texture, spans 7 meters each way. And then it just wraps back around to the beginning of the texture again. So there we go, and we might as well just apply some kind of metal texturing to these other things. We can create a second W3D material. And with the objects selected, not the plane, we'll right-click Assign to Selection.
and now we have a basic metal texture on our things. Again, we can do, uh, you know, if you want to scale it down, you can do the same UVW map modifier up here with these selected. And you can, uh, you could convert them to uh, editable poly as well. Um, that step wasn't actually necessary to apply the texture to this, but it's something we'll do eventually anyway. So I'll just have these selected and apply the map. And this time we don't want it to plane. See how it's set to planar? What planar does is it projects your texture straight down or in one direction, essentially. I mean, you can edit what direction this is uh, if you wanted to. Um, but we don't want that because we have some 3D objects here this time. So set it to box. And then you can set this to 777 or you know whatever value you want. The higher the value, the more it'll stretch out. And the smaller the value, the more it'll tile. Here we go, that's more of a sensible size, wouldn't you say? Great. Okay. Um, that done, I would say we can try exporting. And we'll open Mammoth. I've run it as administrator this time, so I can just uh, launch it straight to the game. Here's our map, and there's one more note I wanted to note. This is uh, very easy, but just a note for you. If you want to calculate the sunlight on this map, just go to Lighting, Rebuild Static Vertex Lighting, and now you have shadows. And let's put an APC here too. We've gone to the preset, we've hit make. Notice how it's red when you click and drag it around? That likely means it's stuck in the terrain and too low. So if you want to drag it up, hold shift when you drag it. And you'll notice it turns white, and that means it's okay. Moving the spawner so you don't just get killed at spawn. Okay, let's see how this runs. I'm just going to hit uh, Control Shift R. That should launch it straight to the game. It's the same thing as going to File Run. There we are. So now I've spawned next to my ABC. I can shoot at things. There we are, we've done some basic textures, good job.